unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth, and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language. But the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. Praise God. You may have your seats. Let's get into the word. Praise God. Now today I was asking the Lord, what do you want me to share to your people? And so it's important. Um, I usually, and I share by the leading of the Spirit and by the unction. And today, if you may want to title it, I just want to share about fellowship. Fellowship with God, with the Spirit, whatever you call it, but fellowship. If you want to call it, you can call it true fellowship. Thank you, Jesus. Now listen, I want to start this way. There are two realms. There is light and there is darkness. Praise God. There is light and there is darkness. Okay? There is a kingdom of God and there is the devil. Praise God. There is nothing in between. Praise God. There is nothing in between. Listen, you have to come to this mind because most people think, most people are not conscious of his reality. Fellowship with God will always vindicate a person. Listen, we have, for a long time people think coming for fellowship is coming to Fanero. Coming to fellowship is going to church. I'm going for fellowship, blah, 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 blah. But listen, There is fellowship by the word of God. There's a way to know that a man walks with God. Because fellowship is a place where a man relates with God. And that's how I am going to start today. And I believe as I share, many of you, the Bible says, examine yourself whether you be in the faith. Most people say, I probably did not get well. I prayed to God. I prayed to God. I prayed to God and it didn't work. As I was praying, I believed. I was healed. Then before, five days later, I was taken to the hospital. Then I, I continued praying. Then the doctors came and I, they said my situation, my cancer had circulated the whole body. Listen, that is not fellowship. Praise God. The Bible says God is light. Praise God. God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. God is light. God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. The Bible says, as many as have received him, gave he the power to become the sons of God. It means to be a son takes a power. It means you can't say you're a son of God, and you don't manifest the power of God. It means you can't say that you're a son of God and you don't have the attributes of God. Jesus Christ once said that he was a son. Do you know that they wanted to stone him? The Jews understood it. When he said he was a son, they said he tra- he's trying to say he has the life of God. What New Testament is singing? The Jews understood it. When you say you are a son of God, you're trying to say you carry the very life of God. That to them was blasphemy. Praise God. So let's continue with that scripture. God is light. This then is the message which we have heard of him. And declare unto you that God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. And in him there is no darkness at all. If any man be in Christ. The Bible says God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. Are you hearing me? Statements 
Like I'm coming into the presence of God. Become disqualified. Listen, how, listen, I want to understand. How do you say, Lord, now we come into your presence? I don't understand it. Let me ask you a question. When did you get into the presence of God? Let's get it. When did you get into the presence of God? When you became born again. When he was crucified, we were crucified with him. Praise God. When he was buried, we were buried with him. When he was resurrected, we were also resurrected with him into the newness of life. Praise God. So right now, I'm going to share a very, very disturbing scripture. But it's going to, listen, it's going to bless us. Next verse, First John 5. Now listen, John did something spectacular here. It, this scripture has always, you know, listen, this is the scripture that increases me. The Bible says, if we say that we have fellowship with him. Now listen, the word fellowship is the very Greek word that means koinonia, that word that means communion with God. Having the very life of God. Sharing, being a partaker. The Bible says we have been made partakers of the divine nature. It means we participate. So when you say that if we say that we have fellowship, it means you participate. You share in the very life of God. And God is light. And in Him, there is no darkness at all. So He says, if... Listen, He he, 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 he challenges... He says, if we say... We have fellowship. Oh, where are you from? I'm from fellowship. Where are you? From fellowship. But you know, my, my stomach is hurting. You understand? They joked. They, we had, um, there's a clinic that was near a certain church. And I was talking to that, the, the, the administrators of that clinic. And they said, Sunday is our busiest day. I said, why? Usually, uh, because the clinic is at the church, as in as guys get out of church, they just enter the clinic. Mark, listen, in Fanero, that cannot happen. If, if there was a clinic there, it would no, have no, no customers there. It, it, listen, it, listen, that hospital or clinic would no have no business from inside here. Because we sort that out here. People, listen, how can you say, I didn't go to church because I'm sick? That's madness. That shows, you see, you see, you didn't go to church because you are sick. I've heard it so many times. And I said, do these, do these guys understand the life they are in? Do we, you see, the question is, do we understand what happened? So he says, if we say we have fellowship and walk in darkness, and walk in darkness... We lie. Now listen, John didn't say that we say we lie. He just said we lie. If a man is walking in darkness, he de- you don't need to say it. You are lying. You can't say you have fellowship with God and walk in darkness. The Bible says, John says you lie. I said, God, Liz, I'm sorry for lying. Praise God. I'm sorry for lying. It means that darkness in business, that darkness in your health, that darkness in your business, that darkness in your relationship, that darkness in your marriage. Listen, he says, if we say we have communion, if we carry the very life of God, how can we walk in darkness? How? How? Listen, you can't be in fellowship with God and have demons. It's not possible. It's not possible. It's not possible. You, listen, that's why I don't understand what a deliverance service is. I don't understand it. I don't understand it. You can't be in the light of God. Lakaba. <laughs> and listen, demons are delivered from you. It doesn't make sense. You're not in the light of God. Listen. The finished work of Jesus Christ. <laughs> listen, he says these are the signs that follow those who believe. It means they're, they're, they're vindications. They're manifestations that follow those who believe. He says, they shall cast out devils. The primary line of a born again creature. He casts out devils. Why? Because he's seated far above all principality. Above anything. Listen, anything you are above, you can cast. You cannot cast out what you are that left same level. You can cast anything below you. So when you say you are seated with God. 
You are in Christ in heavenly places. Oh, listen, that, that understanding can drive any devil out of your village. Not in your body, your village. So, you're saying, I have fellowship with God, but I'm struggling. I have, listen, I refuse. If we say, if we say, if we say we have fellowship with Him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. The Bible says we lie and do not the truth. What is truth? The Bible says your word is truth. It means we do not do the word. It means when a man does the word, it's impossible to walk in darkness. It has become an impossibility. <laughs> Listen, recently, November Blessing, I think, they brought me a woman. She was about 60 years old. She looked 80. Because they said she has uh, chest pain, she has knee pain, back, you know, everything. So I laid hands everywhere and it left. Then they said... No, 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 you're not yet done. I said, what's the problem? They said, she can't see. <laughs> I looked at her, I was tired of laying hands. I said, you can see me. Immediately I said, you can see me. Her eyes open. She started counting my buttons. She started showing me her relatives who brought her. Her relatives knelt down. Listen, there's a place when a man has fellowship in God. You don't cast out devils. No, the light of God. Listen, it means when I come into a place, the light of God has gotten into a place. When you're here, it's not because the presence of God is coming. No, no, no. Because the presence of God, where the Bible says you are sealed to the Holy Ghost, has entered a place. Do you understand me? So he says, if we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, the Bible says we lie. The Bible says we lie. You are lying. It's not true. Why? Because you do not the truth. You do not. That's the word. He says you do not the truth. Get me amplified. Amplified. I want this thing to sink in your spirit. That I want you to live mad. Do you understand? Mad. I want you to live uncomfortable. You say, this can't be. So if we say we are partakers together. Listen, the word partakers means we participate together with God. And enjoy. And enjoy fellowship. With Him. When we live and move and are walking about in darkness. We are both speaking falsely. And do not live and practice. The truth which the gospel presents. So it means when a man practices the truth that the gospel presents, it's impossible to walk in darkness. It's impossible. It means when a man comes to a place where he walks truth, he demonstrates truth, it's impossible to walk in darkness. Listen, I was asking God, what's the problem? And I realize the problem has been us. Usually the ministers. When you trace the history of this nation, the first missionaries, stroke preachers, came with medicine. You understand? They built a church, they built a hospital. That's how we started. So, they tell you, when you have a headache, we give you a paradu. So, you understand? That's how they came. Had the first preacher come by healing. Mandaraba. You understand? Had the first preacher come by healing. We wouldn't, we didn't have a hospital next to a church. So hospital was next to church. Do you realize? When you look at Ruvaga Hospital, there has to be Ruvaga Cathedral. When you look at Namayambe Cathedral, there has to be... When you look at Chibuli Mosque, there has to be Chibuli... Listen, when the light of God got into my spirit, I said, my kids, my own seed can never be sick. They can't. That's why I don't, my wife knows it, I don't play. Even to tell me that there's a flu, she knows me. I said, what do you mean? She knows. She knows. She knows me. When, one day, she called me. Listen, we're preaching together. She called me one time, and she was also not home, so she didn't have the accurate information. She told me, uh, Zach, a maid has called me and said the kids are not well. 
It means she, she hadn't been home. So she's getting a story telling me. That time I was going to preach somewhere. I wasn't, this was not rude. I hung up. You do not the truth. Listen, I know my kids. I hung up and I went and ministered. But as soon as I came back at home, guess who was the first? Jeremiah was running. Daddy, you understand? No sickness. Listen, listen. I don't, me, I don't caress this nonsense. I, 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 I hate, I hate, I hate. Listen, when Jesus goes to Peter's mom, he enters Peter's house. The one we call our Lord. The one who calls, we call him Lord. When, oh Jesus, you know. Listen, he gets in and they tell him that Peter's mother has a fever. What did the Bible say? He rebuked. He didn't, he didn't say, oh, okay. So she can't have Savas tea today. Okay, Peter. Let her go to the bedroom. We, the Lord will bless her. No, the scripture says, he rebukes. Oh, where is it? Give it to us. Then inquired he of them the hour when he began to amend. And they said unto, no, listen, get it to us. Get it. Oh, no, 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 no. Is it there? No, 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 no. I think it's in the Gospel of John. We need, we need, we need, to, we need, to, we need to look at this. We need to look at this. It's important. Let me get it. It's, been, it's done in different accounts. John, look also does it. It's important. I feel we can't leave this one. Praise God. But Simon's wife, Simon's wife's mother lay sick of a fever. Okay, what some of you call mother-in-law. Okay? And anon they tell him of her. But Simon's wife's mother, listen, and he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and immediately the fever left, and she ministered unto him. No, there's a place where the Bible says rebuked John. Let me get it. It's important. I want to show you the attitude of Jesus towards flu, fever. You understand? So that you understand. Eh? There we even haven't reached... It's important we get this scripture. Shatayaka. And he stood over her and rebuked the fever and it left her and immediately she arose and ministered unto them. So many men are afflicted because of a simple thing. They have not understood that these are the signs that follow those who believe. They shall cast out devils. So most of them are caressing demons. Mom, she has a fever. She, but she, 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 before you know it, she has, he has a small wound. Before you know it, they're saying, after three months, they're saying there's a small cancerous thing. Before you know it, they're saying that the guy, listen, I don't play. There's, listen, there's, there's the wisdom we speak to them that are mature. Listen, we don't play with those things. We don't play. We don't play. Listen, don't never joke that you can be funny, that you can be weak. We don't talk. The Bible says, in this was he manifested. In this was he manifested. In this was he fanerod. That he might destroy the works of the devil. Was he manifested? That he might destroy. Were they destroyed? Behold the Lamb of God which takes away the sin of the world. Was it taken away? So what's the problem? Are you getting me? This is why we're here. We're not here just to, to have fellowship. Praise God. The problem is that sin has been magnified beyond its place in the church. The de- ah, there are devils here. Oh, you understand. The other day I had a pastor saying that let's not bonga. Let's bonga in the air because of Ebola. The other week, the other week, was it the other week? There was that funny video going round about of a maid who beat up. Someone even told me, Pastor Zach, you need to get a what? How do you call them? I laughed. <laughs> At CCTV too. You understand? Because a devil in a maid may try... No, listen, listen. I'm beyond that. 
Someone joked and told me the next Saturday, most mothers were, who were banking had carried their babies. You understand? So fear had dominated. So they were in the bank with their babies. You understand? Banking. Listen. Listen. No maid. That's other people's maids. No maids. That has, listen, that anyone that comes here, your maid can't beat you. Okay? That devil can't live in your house. It can't. It can't. Let me tell you, let me tell you. One of the, you need to understand the mind of the enemy. Listen, when he does that, when you send a video like that, what do you do? You instill fear. When you instill fear, it becomes a belief that maids can do what? So another guy came and told me something interesting. He said, you know what? Me, I have CCTV cameras all over. For him, he has it everywhere. His compound, what? So he was checking the camera. This maid had become too sharp. She, he saw her. He, she was watching the video. She, she knows that there's a camera there. So he found her. He saw the video. She was crawling in the grass. Going to meet her boyfriend. You understand? So it means you just, you just intensify. The Bible says where the law is. Listen. Now listen. We... You, in Fanero, someone in Fanero can't be here thinking about CCTV. That's, we, are, we are above that. We, we are above. We, there's an anointing in my house. You can't, that devil can't be in you. The Bible says we are the light of the world. We are the light of the world. So it means wherever we set our foot, there is light. Praise God. Wherever we touch, there is light. Wherever, listen, where, in our offices, anywhere, anywhere there is light. Let me tell you something. The devil is in trouble. He's in trouble. Romans 6. Romans 6. Romans 6. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Now listen, I just want to touch a few things before Paul touches a very, very, very... Listen, this is some of, one of the things that many of us, we grace ministers, that we are misunderstood here. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? That's the question. Next line. God forbid, how shall we? That are dead to sin, live any longer therein. Now, you need to understand Paul's mind. He, Paul's mind is a man under grace. How can he continue to sin? You, see, you don't understand. Paul's mind is, how does a man under grace continue to sin? It means a man under grace, it's impossible. Paul said, by the law, I was blameless. Paul says it. It means, there was, listen, by the law of Moses, Paul was regarded blameless. Now, I think much more a man under the grace of God. He says, how? How shall we sin? Get me the definition of sin, according to Thayer. The definition of sin. Because many of you think it's just slapping someone, you know, doing so and so, stealing. Listen, the word sin is the very word hamatia. It's a noun, sin, in Greek. The first place... 1A, to be without a share in. Okay? 1B, to miss the mark. So when you talk about sin, a man that has sinned has missed the mark. So Paul is saying, <laughs> how shall we miss the mark? He says, sin shall no longer have dominion over you, for you are under grace. It means a man under grace cannot miss the mark. Because grace is the divine influence of God on the human spirit. It means God takes over your life. Then how do you sin? That means you're trying to say God can sin. That's Paul's mind. Can a man under the grace of God miss the mark? Let's get back to the definition. We are getting back. I know some of you. He says to miss the mark. See. To err. To be mistaken. It means Paul is saying a man under grace cannot err. A man under grace cannot just get, you know, he cannot just be off the mark. That's what Paul is saying. 
He says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Next line. To error, to be mistaken. Next line. To miss or wander from the path of uprightness and to do or go wrong. To miss or wander from the path of uprightness and to honor, to do or go wrong. It means, listen, how shall, when Paul says, how shall we do this? He says, we are now dead to sin. Now listen, Paul is trying to say, when he says we are dead to sin, it means we are dead to that life that can miss the mark. We are not alive to it. It means we are dead to that life that can get sick. We are dead to that life that can walk outside the will of God. Listen, the question of... Whether you are walking in or out of the will of God, ceases to be because a man under the grace of God. The Bible says we have been begotten of his will. Be- it means we are born of the will of God. It's in nature. So that guy can no longer ask, can I be out of the will of God? That's what, that's what Paul is trying to say. He says we are dead to sin. Dead to sin. Dead to sin. Now I want to understand something. It means if you are dead to sin, HIV regards you dead. <laughs> Poverty regards you dead. You're not, you're not a living thing. Can you infect a dead thing? Praise God. Po- listen, listen. It means a man missing God. Has become impossible. Why? Because that man is dead to that thing. Let me tell you. This is now fellowship. A man walking in the consciousness. That he's dead to sin. The Bible says if we bear the death of our Lord Jesus Christ in the body. Listen. The life of God shall also be manifest. It means when a man bears the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. The life of God can only manifest. Why? He stays healthy. Are you getting me? He stays healthy. He can't be sick. He's wealthy. He's successful. Why? That life is one thing. It's sin. It's a man missing the mark. Therefore, you cannot be a woman in this fellowship and say, will I get married? That's madness. It's, 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 you, you have a problem. You, you, you have not had fellowship. You haven't walked with God to certain levels. Praise God. Praise God. He was talking about us. The Bible says, I, I pray, I wish that you may prosper. Above all things, the Bible says, I wish that your soul may prosper. Because, listen, when a man's soul prospers, listen, the finished work of God was done in the realm of the Spirit. That's why now Paul says, do not conform to the standard of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may be able to test God's good will, God's good, pleasing and perfect will. So when a man's soul is transformed by the word of God, which was is a finished work in the realm of the spirit. The body naturally, the manifestation naturally has to happen. Let me tell you something. I, I primarily I told started by teaching the word, but as I meditated more and more, there are certain things that naturally started coming. I started healing naturally by meditating on the word of God. The life to heal, the life to release, the life of God became a natural thing. It means as a man, listen, whether it's not your gift, whether it's your gift or not, you can do anything in God. Anything in God. Praise God. So let's listen. He says, beloved, I wish that above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health. It means, listen, this is the requirement of the spirit. Listen, divine healing is not to the church. Divine healing is a work before redemption. Because the Bible says, by his stripes we are healed. Jesus Christ was stricken before he went to the cross. Praise God. So, healing is not to the church. Healing is to those that are dead in Christ. They are dead. They are in the world. The reality for Christians is divine health. The reality for Christians is not walking out of debt. The reality for Christians is walking in prosperity. The reality for a Christian, listen, w- w- listen some of these things say, but you shall be healed, telling the church, you sh- what is that? What is that? How can the church of Jesus Christ be healed? I don't understand it. Romans 6. Let's go back. 6.2. What shall we say then? 
Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Next slide. God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Live any longer, live any longer therein. Next slide. Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death? It means we were baptized into his death. It means we were immersed. Jesus Christ became dead to sin. The Bible says we were also baptized with him into that. Praise God. Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death. What did he die to? He died to sin. The Bible says, he who knew no sin became sin that you might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Next line. No, no, we're continuing. Let's stay there. Let's stay there. Let's build it. Let's stay there. It's th- therefore, we were buried with him by baptism into death. By baptism into death. Okay? That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father... Even so, we also should walk in the newness of life. He's saying, listen, he's bringing, he says, as we were baptized into the death, we shall also be, listen, translated into the newness of life. Let me tell you something. The Bible says in the, the, the Gospel of John, the Bible says, for prophecy to be fulfilled, they, there were three men. Jesus was one of them. They come to the first, he was leaving, they broke his legs, and the other. Okay? But there was a prophetic word that the bones, none of the bones of Jesus Christ shall be broken. So to him, when they came, he was already dead. So this guy, to be sure that he was already dead, he got a spear and pierced him on the side. The Bible says blood and water came out. It means the last blood and water that was in him came out. It means Jesus Christ was taken to the grave with no blood. With no human. He had no human blood. The Bible says we were also baptized into the death. He means he died to the flesh. He died to sin. Are you getting me? He died to sin. It means your weakness, he died to it. Your poverty, he died to it. Whatever was, listen, was keeping man apart from God, he died to it. The Bible says in Leviticus 17, 11, the Bible says the life is in the blood. Now, life in the blood, let's understand that. To the old man, the test, Old Testament man, life is in the blood. Because the first man is Adamic. His life is in the blood. Praise God. Now, Jesus took that place. The Bible says he was pierced. Blood and water out. It means when he went to the grave, he had no human blood possible. The Bible says on the third day, Mando Brasaba. The Bible says he was raised to life. By the Spirit. It means there was no blood in him. But the Spirit of God got into Christ and raised him from the dead. It means he went to the grave empty. Now listen, the Bible says the testimony of the earth is the Spirit, the blood, and the water. The testimony of heaven is the Father, the Word, and the Spirit. The Bible says these are one. The next scripture, the testimony of the earth is that the, fa- the, the testimony of the earth is the spirit, okay, the blood, and the water. The testimony is this. When you read that scripture, the blood of Jesus Christ and the water came out. And this was bared witness by the Holy Spirit. Do you understand me? Now the Bible says these three, the spirit, the water, and the blood agree in, in one. Now let's go back up the previous scripture. The Bible says the testimony of heaven. Where, where our conversation is. The Bible says the testimony of heaven is this. The Father, the Word, and the Spirit. When you became born again, the Bible says you are citizens of heaven. So primarily what is life giving in you is not blood. It's the Spirit of God. Because the Spirit of God is what raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Oh, if you understand this, listen, you can't have HIV. Because the Spirit of God, Mala, he, he, God, listen, the Spirit of God shall quicken. He shall deaden. The Bible says the Spirit of God deadens, mortifies our flesh. It means the Spirit of God kills anything in the flesh that's not of God. That, listen, by the name of, no one can have a cancer. Listen, no one can have HIV. No one can have, I don't care what, it, Ebola, it's impossible. Because the Bible says that, listen, listen. 
the Bible says it very explicitly. He says, as many as we are born of God, as many as received him, give you the power to become the sons of God. He starts explaining these sons. He says, those not born of a husband's will, no blood. No of blood. It means you're born of the spirit. You know of blood. Listen, you can, listen. the moment that your doctor says you have HIV, you just release the life of God. You can't have HIV. Because you're not born of blood. That's a lie. So when he says you're blood, you tell him, listen, you don't understand something, sir. Wait a minute. My life is in the spirit. Now, if many of you understand that thing, Listen, your marriage can't be funny, your business. Because what gives life to anything is not blood, it's the Spirit of God. Do you understand me? You, you can't. Listen, in this generation, it's too late for those things. It's too, 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 too late. He made a mistake. It's too late, child of God. Everything, listen, leave me. it means everything that you have in the body agrees to the testimony of heaven. Hey, oh, oh, oh. It, it has to, because the Bible says these three agree in one. The other ones are one. It means the, the spirit that is on the earth, the spirit of his ear. The Bible says, listen, it's expedient that I go because in a short while I'll be back. So he's back. It means Jesus Christ, the presence of God, is in you when you receive the Holy Ghost. The blood and the water. Now listen, child of God, the moment you're born again, you start realizing that everything about you agrees with the Father, the Word, and the Spirit. Everything about you. The Bible says we have been blessed in heavenly places. Praise God. We have been blessed with all things, with all spiritual gifts in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. It means, listen, heaven is in Christ. Oh, 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 oh. Heaven, heaven, listen, heaven primarily is in Christ. If any man be in Christ, you don't understand me. Heaven is in... So heaven is in you. So everything in your body agrees. Oh, le karabalaba. That's why I dance. I'm not looking for anything outside there. The Bible says, listen, God has made everything beautiful in his time. He has made everything beautiful in his time. The Bible says he has set the world. He has set eternity in the hearts of men. Listen, everything in your life has been set inside, on the inside of you. Every, you don't need to listen. You don't need rich men outside. You don't need, no. Everything in, is inside. Now, that becomes the very grace of meditation. Do you know why we commune with him? That's fellowship. That's fellowship. Listen, many people are still caught up with the things of it. It's funny. We don't have time. Today someone asked me, do you have any business outside at work? Do you have any business outside work? <laughs> I thought about it. I hadn't thought about it. I said, yes. What is it? The gospel. It's true. Though the funny thing is that, listen, my business is the gospel, even at work. Let me tell you something. I, I am, we are pastors and, and preachers, and sometimes there's responsibility accorded to you. And, and people call me sometimes and say, can I come? Because sometimes the only time you have is when you're at work. And I said, God, is this right? So I tried it. I said, okay, let me let them. A minister is having you. So I let them come to my office. I talk, some take an hour, some take 30, some take 5, some, you, whatever. But as I do it, <laughs> I get comments from the bosses. Man, we have this guy. Not because I work so hard. Uh-uh. 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 No, I get comments from up there. He says, we have this guy. We need him. I don't know why. So I said, then this is your business. You understand? Do you understand what, what he's preaching? What he's preaching? Listen, we have come into a life where we cannot be separated from God. The Bible says that Jesus came as the only begotten of the Father. 
he came onto the earth. When the Bible says the word became flesh, he was the only begotten. It means Jesus was the only one, the word that came from the Father. But in Revelations, the Bible says, now he's the first begotten of the dead. Not, not only now. The Bible says now he's the first. He's not, the word first begotten of the dead, it means Jesus Christ was the first man that was raised from spiritual death. Not being raised from the grave. Many in the Old Testament were. But the first man that came forth from spiritual death was Jesus Christ. The Bible says first, not only. It means there are many who are here. The Bible says we have passed on from death unto life. So you cannot be in the realm of life, near life. <laughs> the Bible says we have passed on from death unto life. The word is translated. It means I cannot be I'm either in life or death. There's no middle ground. Now listen, what differentiates the new creature is this. When a man is born again, he's in Christ. Praise God. When a man is born again, he's in what? Christ. The only thing that can cause that man is when his soul is opposed to God. The Bible says to be carnally minded. Because the mind is in the realm of the soul. So that man is born again, but he has not yet grown in the things of God. So a man carnally minded can be sick, can be poor, he can be down. So it does not mean that, yeah, yeah, but I saw the other pastor make this mistake. No, 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 no. no. It doesn't matter. I don't care which pastor has made a mistake. I don't care which Christian. The Bible says a thousand shall fall at your side, ten thousand on your right hand side, but none shall come near you. Listen, this is the reality. Psalms 91 is one of the scriptures that we use in the Psalms that, that, that protect us from that life. Praise God. Many of us use it. He shall, if you abide in him, he shall, you know, protect you from all that. Listen, that's the, the testimony of the resurrected life. Because when you are born again, you are in the realm of heaven. It means when you are in the realm of heaven, to the world you are dead. The Bible says flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. That means when a man is in God, it has become impossible for anything not in that realm to come his way. That's why, listen, there are no poor men, there are no sick men in heaven. So listen, when you're you're, you're still afflicted in that realm, it's just that you have not yet grown in the things of God. That's all. So that's why the Bible says my people perish because of a lack of knowledge. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I want to go slow so that this thing sinks even in the simplest mind. In the simplest mind. You can live here saying, no, listen. It's too late. Praise God. Say it's working. It's working. Romans 6. Verse 5. Romans 6 verse 5. The Bible says, For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Next line. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, That the body of sin might be destroyed. Listen, the body of sin might be destroyed. That henceforth we should not serve sin. It means a man can no longer serve sin. Next line. For he that is dead is freed from sin. So, listen. When you are baptized into the death of our Lord Jesus Christ, you became dead to sin. That's the first dimension. You are dead to that life. You are dead. It, in your life, it does not exist. That's, what, that's the redemptive work of Jesus Christ. That's the place of redemption. Okay? Next line. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Next line. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead, dieth no more. Death has no more 
dominion over him. Okay? Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Death has no more dominion over him. Okay? It means, listen, I want you to understand this very carefully. I want you just to just concentrate here. Very ca- as you meditate. Listen. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dies no more. It means he can no longer experience that life anymore. Okay? Death has no more domination over the man. Verse 10. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. So it means your life in Christ can only be unto God, unto God, unto God. It can no longer be the other way. It can no longer. Listen, that's the mind of the new creature. It can, listen, it can, it means everything. The Bible says, I'm the Lord thy redeemer, which teaches you how to profit. Which teaches you how to profit. The word teach is the Greek word didasko. It means, by the, listen, by the revelation of the spirit, didasko is the place where you're imparted. The word is impart. He imparts knowledge inside. He instills so that a man is able to walk in righteousness. Praise God. Praise God. Do you understand me? It's important that you get this. The Bible says, I will send you the comforter who is from the Father. The Bible says, he shall teach you all things. It means the primary place of the Holy Spirit, the primary place of the Spirit of God in your life is to teach you. The primary teacher in your life is the Holy Spirit. Any guy that has grown in God primarily has learned to be taught of the Spirit. David says, listen, he says, Oh God, oh God, you have taught me from my youth. He that or have I declared your wondrous works. It means when a man is taught of God, you can, the next pattern is wondrous works. Miraculous works. David could, could, could kill lions. He could kill bears. He killed Goliath. That he was a man taught of God. That's the primary ministry of the Spirit of God. It means when you're taught of the Spirit. That's why, listen, Nicodemus comes to Jesus and calls him rabbi, teacher. Do you realize? He calls him teacher. He says, the things you do, you must be from God. Why? He's calling him teacher by the demonstration of what Jesus Christ did. It means, listen, men will come to you by the demonstration of what you do in Christ Jesus. He says, if you do not believe in me, at least believe in the evidence of my miracles. The works are important to the world. They are very, listen, that's how we bring them in. That's why we pray for the sick, we raise the dead, we do anything. If anybody is afflicted, we always pray for them. It's important. So it's important that you can demonstrate the life of God. And listen, this is the work of the Spirit. It's a work of the Spirit. Anybody that believes can work in this. this let, let me, let me, we stopped having this realm that pastor so and so can do this. No, no, no. Any child of God that believes can, listen, can raise the dead, can cast a cancer. Anyone. That's why for me, if you don't believe, I'll watch you take your medicine. I watch you. But if you say you believe. Praise God. Praise God. Now let's go back to the other scripture. I want to now finish. I want to finish. First John, where we started? First John, I think, 1, verse 7. He said, if we have fellowship with God, okay, and walk in darkness, the Bible said we lie and do not the truth. Next slide. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. Next slide. But, now listen, this is the place. The Bible says, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. That means when a man walks with God, when a man has fellowship with God, the very life of God becomes the very experience of the man. Get me amplified there. Get me amplified. But if we really are living and walking in the light, as he himself is in the light, we have true unbroken fellowship, unbroken fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, removes us from all sin and guilt, keeps us cleansed from sin in all its forms and manifestations. Now listen, 
Listen, in all its forms, in all its forms, in all its forms, in all its forms, I'm not going to mention, in all its forms and manifestations, it means any manifestation of sin is removed when a man walks in fellowship with God. When a man says, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, something is removed. I am the righteousness of God. I am above I'm above and beyond. Listen, when a man says, listen, the Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? Listen, that's what happens. But men have not learned to do this. Because the Bible says, do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate, meditate, meditate upon it day and night. That you may observe. The word observe is shama. It means that you might be hedged in. Oh, oh, oh. It means the man meditates divine health and is hedged. He's hedged into divine. He's held into financial prosperity. He's hedged into success. When a man observes therein, the scripture says therein. It means when you meditate, you're hedged into the life. You're hedged. The first time they brought me a woman with a blood issue, she came and listen. I had meditated on Jesus healing that woman. It was. It's as though when they brought her, I actually laughed and I said, thank you God. Immediately, immediately. Because I was hedged into that life. You understand? That miracle, I was hedged into it. It means your, your next biggest deal, you just have to learn the secret. Your next biggest, you have to. Listen, let me tell you, meditation is the very place of walking in the spirit. When a man learns to meditate on, in, in the word, it means the man walks there. In the spirit. And let me tell you something. Wherever you are manifest in the spirit, your body will appear. So when, when, you, when you meditate success, praise God. Oh, when you meditate, you have to be successful. Let me tell you something. Amplified. Give me amplified. Amplified version. Because when a man meditates in the word of God, even the wisdom, the application comes naturally. It's as though, so when the thing is manifest, it's as though you, you, you have ever been there. Many of you like calling it deja vu. No, 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 no. It was, it was a walk in the spirit. Praise God. Praise God. When I saw this meeting, I told Apostle Grace, I think three years ago, and he had seen the same. So it means Apostle Grace and myself never walked. We, ne- we knew that a day would come and there would be thousands here. He knew God had spoken. So when I told him, he's like, this guy knows what God has told me. And listen, it's a place of meditation. It means, let me tell you, when you meditate, you provide for yourself. You're providing. That's what it means to provide. To provide for your life means you have wa- already walked there in the spirit. When I was getting married, I used to meditate, and I, because I'm a preacher, I used to meditate, people give their lives to Christ. And so I would think about it, and I'm like, so I would ask God, how do you want me to do it? you want me to preach? you want me to... So there was, a f- there was a wonderful gentleman on my wife's side. He gave a speech. He said, uh, praise God. He didn't say praise God, but I remember he was talking. He said, I'm going to say something that not even my wife knows. I have believed for a long time, but today I'm confessing Jesus Christ as my Lord. So when he said it, I'm like, <laughs> it means when I was meditating, the Bible says that, listen, we commend ourselves to the consciences of men. It means when I was meditating that thing, there was a guy. Oh, there was a guy. There was a guy. Think, pondering about Christ. Do you see, do you see, let me tell you something. Meditations are the very access to divine purpose. Because when you meditate in the spirit, you cannot walk outside your calling. It's impossible. You will meditate. The Spirit of God will drop you in the lines that God called you to be. So you can't think, Vananga, well, you can't know this secret and think, oh, how will I make it in life? It becomes madness. He says, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. It means a man speaks it all the time. It means he speaks it all the time. The word can't leave. It can't leave. He says, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, that you may chama, observe, to do according to all that is written in it. It means, when do you do? When you're in the realm of the spirit. When do you do? That's the doing. It's not physical. Ah, the physical is just a manifestation. For the Bible says, for he works in us to will and to do according to his good pleasure. It means you walked in the realm. 
are you seeing why so many, many people have not walked where? Listen, they have just thought the wrong way. They have just thought the wrong way for too long. They have been, their minds have been, listen, they have been meditating on fear, meditating on worry. The Bible says that the days of the afflicted are evil. They are evil. It means, they, the word evil is that they have unbelief. It's not that they are they're murderers. But all the time they are out of the realm. It means because they have thought of evil all the time, they are afflicted. Watch people who are afflicted. They listen, they don't walk in this life. It's impossible, listen, it's impossible to walk in this life and be afflicted. He says the days of the afflicted are evil. But he that has a merry heart, the Bible says, has a continual continual feast. You understand? Continual feast. This is the life in God. This is the life in Christ. There is no other life. There is no other life. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. There is no other life. All, listen, our life is in Christ Jesus. The Bible says we have been justified from all things. Oh, listen, we have been justified. The Bible says, it means, the word justified means we have been made right. <laughs> we have, you, know, you have been made right from all things. It means a man that thinks right. That's why the Bible says righteousness exalts a nation. When the nation thinks right, it's impossible. I told guys on a chat, when there was that funny scare of a bomb, I said, listen, as long as I'm in Uganda, I say, me, myself, let me say that, I take my, I said, as long as I'm in Uganda, I don't care what they're saying, they can't be a bomb. You see, when we got this knowledge, now it has become impossible. Now, if there are bombs in Kenya, listen, that's their problem. I, we have, listen, we are watchers of our nation. It's not, it's not the president. It's not the president. Who watches over your home? <laughs> the Bible says, He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. So he said, Lord, protect. You meditate protection over your home. Oh, you understand? You meditate protection over your whole face. When a thief even looks at your house and thinks of it, something, he gets a headache. You understand? <laughs> when he thinks of your house, he gets a headache. Ah! Sha! I'm. People call me, I think Pastor Nixon and whatever says, if you've lost anything, call Pastor Zach. Listen, I, I, many people send me WhatsApp, I've lost my laptop, I'm tired, I don't want, listen, don't, I'm not a witch doctor, you understand? Listen, listen. The secret is, I have meditated the life that keeps my stuff. I have me simple. But for you, you don't tithe, you understand, you don't, you understand, you're there, you're funny, you understand. And then you say, Pastor, uh, please pray for me. Uh, I heard that they uh, were saying that uh, you can recover. Listen, don't be, let, I don't want to spoil anyone. Meditate, you know, make, that you may make your way. You may make your way successful. Your way. You've met pastors, which doctors, prophets, they, some prophets end up lying to you. Because, listen, the guy is under force, you understand? He, he believes he's a prophet and he has to give you a divine... You, you make the man of God. You stand with the man of God. Listen, stop in the name of Jesus. You understand? Looking for prophecies. You understand? In the, uh, listen. Listen, no God. He says you error because you know not the scriptures, not the power of God. It means when a man knows, knows. The word is Edo. He's aware. Oh, baka, ba, ba, ba. He's aware. He's aware. When they t- even when they call you that your car has been stolen. Ah! You're like, no, 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 no. I am aware. <laughs> of s- at that point, at that point, the enemy knows. He knows. You understand? They return it. It's a meditation. It's a meditation. I meditate my children. I, I, listen, I, I've meditated my son the best. The best in class. And some people come and tell me, your son is wise. They are starting to see the boy. Is, he says things. I meditate. Oh! When, I'm, when a father is looking after a baby, for me, it's what I used to do. When she asks me, because that's, I get the boy, and as I'm walking, I'm, Libran do seba karaba. You karaba. Then I start wearing his life. That's what it means. So, even, <laughs> listen, this is how we do it. There's no secret. There is no secret. You can't fail in marriage. It's no secret. It's, uh, it's not possible. Meditate. He says, listen. Listen. He says, I'm finishing. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it 
day and night. That you may observe in the realm of the spirit. That's the meditation. And do according to all that is written in it. For then you shall make. That's now. Listen. That's, that's the result. For then you shall make your way. Process. And then you shall deal wisely. The wisdom comes with it. The phronesis. And have good success. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Listen. Say I cannot fail. Listen. I'm a success. I am so, so blessed. You understand? Holy Karaba. Give a mighty hand to the Lord. Le Koraba Sapayaba. Zile Kodeba Lahatayaba Labala Rararaba. Zokoraba Sepayaba Laba. Worship him. Makaraba Laba. Le Kondeba Zekele Brasata Laba Laba Raba. Re Tele Kora Tele Leba. Zonde makale ba la 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 raba le koreba zinde le koreba seka la ba la ba. Listen, as we pray right now, listen. The Bible says, listen. There's a condition. Listen, as we listen, we're going to get into prayer shortly. The Lord, listen. The, this, the word is powerful. The Bible says these words are spirit and life. Solomon says. Hold on to thy instruction, for she is your life. There's an instruction from the Spirit. The Bible says that's your life. The Bible says as many as are led of the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Sons of God means mature. They have learned to hear God. Listen, we are training you here to hear God. So that you may know God yourself. Listen. As the Bible says, the day that worship Him must worship Him in. The true worshippers, the Bible says, must worship in spirit. It means in the realm of the spirit. In the realm of the spirit, it's a finished work. So a man worshipping in the realm of the spirit has come to the awareness of the finished work of Christ. That's worship. And the Bible says, and in truth, truth is the word of God. It means a man worships in the realm of the spirit by the word. Paul says this is the, we are the circumcision of God. The word circumcision means we are the condition. They, listen, we are the circumcision of God that worship God in spirit. Meaning that there is a condition that naturally worships God. So, be, being the circumcision means that you are the set apart. You are sanctified of God. Listen, this is a pattern of the spirit. The Bible says the spirit of God has sanctified you. Has set you apart. So it means as you meditate, you have to realize that the life that you have has been hedged into God. That's your meditation. It means anything outside God, you can't. It's not your life. So the Bible says we are the circumcision of God who worship God in spirit. The next line is, and rejoice. Listen. For we are the circumcision which worship God in spirit. Now let me tell you that the next line of worship, rejoice in Christ Jesus. Next line, and have no confidence in the flesh. We have no confidence. Oh, laba karaba sekada balaba. We have no confidence in the flesh. We regard not the flesh. I do not recognize any manifestation of the flesh right now in the name of Jesus. I don't have any confidence in cancer, HIV, poverty, anything that is of the flesh in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Every person in this place receive it right now in the name of Jesus. You are holy, God Almighty, and in you there's no shadow of turning. You are holy. There's some sick people in the play in this place. You can bring them. Almighty, Any sick person, you can bring them. From edge to edge, you remain the same. You are holy. God Almighty. And in you, there's no shadow.
message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at Uma Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero. Make manifest.